Hey guys, Steve here. Um, so I have a question. Um, have you ever wanted to start building um, an app, an application that has uh, some back-end APIs and maybe some uh, sort of front-end as well? Um, if if you have and you, you know you struggle to figure out where you need to start, um, I'm going to show you in this video uh, my personal favorite way of um, uh, doing this. So on the screen here, I have a an application that I've that I've developed here. Um, I made this earlier. Um, so it's a it's a simple to do app application. So it uh, consists of a backend API um, which in, interacts with an in memory da database. So I'm using the H two in memory database. Um, the calls to the API. Um, allow you to create, read, update and delete uh, to-dos uh, within the database and it obviously serves those uh, to-dos up to whatever client is calling the, the API. Then on the front end I have an Angular app application. Um, it's using Angular 5 and it um, is using Angular material for its kind of look and feel for 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 the app. So let's just let's just take a quick look at the at the app application here. So it's packaged up uh, pretty nicely here. So in the to do app a API folder, I have the back end API of obviously, and um, this is just a Spring Boot um, app, which is is very very simple. Um, if you look at the the Maven POM file, we literally just have um, we're using Spring Boot Starter Data Rest, so that's going to allow us to very very easily expose some uh, GPA entities as uh, RESTful endpoints. Then obviously I have the Spring Data J JPA, so I can start using the the J JPA fr framework to actually create objects which interact with the database, and then I have the H two database and basically by default it just starts up an in-memory da database and, uh, and and talk talks to that if you wanted to use some other database like mongo or postgres or, or something like that you can easily do that all you need to do is include the driver here um, as, as a dependency and then in your uh, resources folder create a, an application.properties file and define your uh, database con connection parameters there uh, but for now we're just using H2 in memory uh, because it's easy. Um, so if we look at, so we have a JPA en entity here which uh, just references a table called to-dos in the database and here's the pr parameters I have on it. So it has an ID obviously, each to-do gets a title, each to-do gets a description, each to-do gets um, the timestamp of when it was created and each to-do has a flag which says whether it's being completed or not. Um, so when, when I start up the backend API um, it will automatically create those tables within the, the in-memory database for me. So that's nice. Um, then the, the only other thing I really need to show you here is uh, this, the to-do repository. So because I'm using a the Spring Data Rest uh, dependency within, within my app, the only thing I need to do to expose a CRUD a API for that to do as object is create this interface here. So this interface is going to be your repository REST controller um, and it extends the CRUD repository and it we, we tell it it's going to be dealing with to-do objects and the ID is a, a long integer. Um, so doing this alone, this gives us a, a forward slash to-dos resource which allows us to create, read, update and delete to-dos in, in the database. Um, then onto the so I have the the Angular app here stored in a separate folder, 
Um, I won't go into the Angular code too much. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a tutorial series sometime on that. Um, but this basically just, it's a simple ang Angular app. Um, we have our, you know, our, our HTML here, which is, um, this is this this is basically all the HTML we really have for the app here. So it just uh, gives you a button to, you know, click to create a new to-do. It pops up a dialog, you type in some information, then it saves it to the database. And there is kind of a, a list of to -do to-dos displayed on the screen then. So we'll see, we'll see that wor working here. Um, yeah, so to actually run this now, um, so I've, I've provided a number of different options for packaging and running this as well, which I'll go, I'll go into in, in, in a minute. But when you're developing you know, on your local machine, you want to kind of run the back end API separately from the front end, and they need to kind of be able to talk to each other to see if you want to get them, see, see if what you're doing with them is working. Um, so for the for the API, it's pretty it's pre pretty simple. I can do it from my IDE here. I can right click on this file and then you know click Run to do app. Um, that's a, that's an easy way of doing it. Um, what, I want, what I want to do here is I want to kind of run them uh, within the tar terminal here. So in this uh, terminal window, I'm in the the to do app API folder. So I'm in here looking at the Spring application, which is my backend API. Now to run this, all I have to do is type um, MVN Spring Boot colon run. So that tells um, Maven to run the Spring Boot application. So if I hit hit enter on that, it should build the backend API and it will start it up running. And that's it running there now. Um, then if I want to start up the front end, I'm, I have that folder open here in my other tab. So the to do apps API or to do app UI. Um, and one important thing with this um, is if we go back to our IDE is this proxy conf.json. So Within, within the Angular app, obviously, we're going to be creating calls to the to-do um, backend API and to the to-do's resource specifically. Um, so what this does, the proxyconf.json file, what, what it does is when we, when we use it to run the, the app, is any anytime it sees you calling the to-do's resource from your Angular code, it's going to reroute that call to to this uh, base URL. Um, now this is where my backend API is listening. So localhost colon 8080. If I look at the terminal, go back here, we can see that this API app started up on port 8080. We can see it here. So, so basically that, that, that proxy conf dot, dot, dot JSON, it, it's just creating a proxy between my front end app and my back end app so they can easily talk to each other um, and I, I don't have to add in you know extra code within the angular um, typescript code to actually you know route it to the correct um, URI or URL I should say um, so let's start up the the front end and we'll see it working Where am I? here so I need to do ng serve. So ng serve usually, you know, starts up a, a Angular application that's built you or that's created using the Angular CLI. Um, obviously, I'll, 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 I'll leave links to all this stuff in the description. And the next thing I, I need to do is I need to specify the proxy config, and I need to give it the proxy config.json. So so this, so this basically tells the app to create that proxy for me between my back end and my front end. So I'll run that. And it just takes a second to build it. And then it should run. 
run. Okay, perfect. So just to just to show you now, um, if I go to localhost colon eighty eighty forward slash to dos, I get a response back from my backend API. Okay, so this is ba ba basically getting a list of all the to dos that exist in the database, and we can see that uh, it passes back an empty array, so that means we haven't created any to-dos in the database yet. Um, so let's uh, get off that, and if we go to localhost 4200, that's where our front-end app has started up and is listening. So we can see here, you know, it's listening on 4200. Um, so let's just have a quick look at what the, what the app can do. So it's pre pretty simple. Um, again, it's using Angular Material for the kind of look and feel here and these icons. Um, so if I click a new to do, it pops up a dialogue here. So create better YouTube content. I need more subscribers. And save that. We can see we now have one to do in our list. Um, if we create another one, so we'll just say do something and description now. You can see we now, we now have multiples in our in our list. Now, if you, if you want to um, you know complete these, you can actually hit the hit the drop down here. It pops down. It shows you the the more detailed description of the of the to do. And it gives you a couple of actions here. So you can either complete the to-do or you can delete it. So we want to complete this one. And we can see there that the, <coughs> the little indicator has changed to a green tick to say it's been completed. Now if I, if I refresh that page and you know, completely reload it, we can see it's either pulling back the two um, to-dos again. If I go back to my backend API here and I refresh that, we can actually see our to-dos here um, in the backend API, you know, as it as it would present it to the to, to the actual front end. So, so the one that says I need more subscribers is obviously completed, and the other one is is not. Um, so, where are we? Go back here, and then the last thing we can do. Big, easily is just it's just deleted to do and it's gone. So that's pretty much it for what the app does and and, and how it works. Now back to um, I mentioned within this app I, I provided a couple of different ways to uh, package the thing up and deploy it. Um, so let me stop these two things here. Um, now in my Maven config file this is where uh, I've, 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 I've done this, so in the to-do app API POM file, I'm creating these profiles and I have a, a kind of general build kind of plugins that, down here. So the general one, if I, if I just want to run the backend a API on its own, I just do a Maven Spring Boot uh, colon run and it will ignore this part because that's in, in its own separate profile and it'll just use this bit. Now the other way I've, I've done this is I'm able to package the backend API and the front-end code into a single runnable jar file and that's done using this bundle profile. Basically what it does is it will it will go and package up the the UI code itself and it will output the resulting build from the UI into the resources static folder here which for if if if, if you know spring spring boot you will un understand that the resources sta static folder is where you put kind of static uh, web content like HTML files or JavaScript files 
which is basically what the Angular app is when it's built. So it writes the Angular built Angular app into the resources static folder. Then it comes down and it runs this one to package it up as a jar file. And it gives it a specific name as well, so it's its do app bundle, and it doesn't name it the to do app API. So this kind of gives you you know multiple options to to deploy this app. Um, you can deploy a backend API on its own, on its own server. You could package up front end and deploy that on its own server and have it running on its own server, and have the two talking the two talking to each other um, that way. Or you can package it all up into one single jar file and just deploy that to a server and run it and you get the whole application in the in the one place. So let me show you the, the bundle here now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna package the bundle. So if I do a Maven and then I need to specify the profile I want to run, so that's the bundle profile, and I'll just do a clean package. So that's so that's going to produce the the runnable jar file for me that I can then you know copy up to a server and run it or etc. But I'm going to package it up here and I'm going to run it locally. Ignore those warnings, whatever they are. So we can see. Build was successful. We can see here in the middle that it's that. That, that it was building the front end code and it would have stored that in the resources static folder. If we go back to our IDE, we should see the package front end code in here now, which we do. Again, it's just HTML and JavaScript files, so it, it can be served up from that static folder. So, so we now have our package jar file. Um, if I do java minus jar and it's going to be in the target directory so, so we have the to do app bundle and the version number dot jar. If I run that this will run the complete application backend API plus the front end code and it's going to serve it all up through port 8080. There. So let's just see see that working. Close that tab. I go back here to localhost 8080, and you can see I get my to-do application. And just to make make sure that that it works, so I'm going to create another to-do. People to subscribe. Go subscribe. Whatever something crazy and we can see the that is saved to the database again and I have the same functionality again which with everything packaged up in, in, in one jar file. So that's it. Um, if if you're looking for you know somewhere to start when you're when you're building a new app this is a good place to start in, in my opinion. Um, it gives you lots of options around you know technologies you might you might want to use. It can Obviously, uh, Spring for the backend a APIs, you, you have your choice of backend databases, whichever one you want to use, and um, Spring can pretty much talk to anything. On the front end, you have your Angular app. Um, I'm using Angular Material for my look and feel. If you wanted to use Bootstrap or, some, or some, something else, you could do that. You just um, import the, the, the Bootstrap libraries, etc. Um, that's it. Um, the source code for this is going to be up on my GitHub page. I'll link it in the description. Um, you can go and download it, play around with it yourself, change it whatever way you want, create your own cool apps. Um, but that's it for now. Um, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to uh, get more content like this. Um, thanks very much for watching.